All right, what's up, guys? You notice how I'm looking off to the side there and not at my camera? Well, that's because I'm checking my OBS window to make sure I got the scene right, picked right, make sure I can see my audio. I get this mic in here. Man, being a YouTube guy, well, so I'm not really the YouTube guy. My son does more YouTube than I do, but I'm the technical background, I think, for a lot of his stuff. And so I tell you what, man, recording videos and you get to the end of the video and you have no audio, I, if you've ever done that more than once, like, 20 times it is so frustrating to get to the end of a 30 minute video and realize you have no audio literally nothing you're talking it's silent sometimes the game has no audio so um i put background music in there because sometimes it helps with like you have a, you have a great video you, at least your voice was there but the game wasn't there totally frustrating so also another thing like Man, you see the, the guys that create these YouTube videos that have the production quality of, of Hollywood. I mean, they're just throwing all kinds of, of cool little animation and objects and stuff all over their video. That, that takes a lot more time than I think a lot of people realize. My buddy Crazy Nate makes a lot of videos um, about Easter eggs and stuff like that. And, man, he spends a lot of time. I don't know if people realize just how much time he spends, but it is tens of hours, tens of 20s of 30s. 80 hours I don't know it's a lot it is a ton of work to put together a 15 minute video so um, anyhow that's not what this video is about this video is about Photoshop in Linux is there such a thing and what is my personal favorite so I'm doing a, a few series a, a series on a few different videos of like what you could do for applications in Linux and to replace what you would normally use in Windows. So I'm trying to start to use Win Linux more than Windows because I don't like Windows 10. So I don't know how many of you guys use Windows 10. I'm guessing everybody because Windows kind of or Microsoft kind of pushed it on you. I I'm not a fan of Windows 10. So I've been using Ubuntu a lot, right? And that's actually what I'm recording this on. I'm using OBS and Ubuntu. I've got myself a Logitech mic. This is no fancy equipment. It's just a Dell laptop. And um, I think Ubuntu is a great platform. So I'm starting to use more tools, and I want to make uh, videos about those tools. So this is going to be about Photoshop equivalents for Linux. And with that said, um, I started with GIMP. GIMP is probably one of the more popular, at least more known ones, I guess. I wouldn't, I don't know if it's as popular as it used to be, but because I think back five, five, ten years ago, GIMP or whatever was probably the primary one, right? There was nothing better. Well, GIMP. Is uh, if you use it a lot, I mean, I'm I, I can't knock it too hard because if you just want to do some quick editing and people that have used it for a long time, I mean, I guess it does its job, right? It doesn't sound like it crashes. Um, it's not like it doesn't open the files you want. It's just not intuitive, in my opinion. Like I'm used to using Photoshop. I like the way Photoshop looks, and as you can tell, if you've ever used GIMP, you can see that my um, my let me switch my scenes here. You can see that my GIMP design looks like Photoshop or closer to it, right? It's all contained within a parent window. GIMP right out of the box is not. You've got like this little guy floating over somewhere. This is floating somewhere. That's floating somewhere. Everything is floating all on its own little window. So if you're like me and you open a lot of applications all the time and you have GIMP open and it's got all these little windows all over the place, I can't tell which windows are part of the stuff in the background or the GIMP app and it's frustrating to me. So I want everything contained in a, in a, in a uh, parent window like this, right? So that's what I've got going. So um, I've been using GIMP for all the thumbnails for my videos. And um, so what I basically do is I'll just start with creating. We'll, we'll, we'll create a, a, a quick one right here now so you guys can see what I'm doing. Ah, forgot to change the background transparent. All right, so I, I want to change the background because I don't want it to be red like that. All right, so I got myself a blank canvas here. And I'm going to just basically type in test. Bam, there you go. So it's kind of cool. I got some of my controls here for the font. You can also go up here and modify those same uh, controls. You can change your font like this. Let's go back up and change this to bangers. Sure, why not? I wanted this to be 250 pixels. Nice, works. I don't really like this color because this, this kind of color is sharp. People would be like, bam, yellow. You can't miss the yellow, man. Can't miss the yellow. All right, so what I'm going to do, though, is I want drop shadows. I love drop shadows. Everything I do has a drop shadow. Yes, it's old school for you guys that really love doing Photoshop fanciness. So pretend like I just used the basic, the basic drop shadow settings, right? It was 4 and 4, and the spread was 15. So you can kind of see it. I don't know. I mean, it's okay. It would work, right? But say I want it to be a little bolder than that. If I, I can't modify the drop shadow, it's already done. This just became a layer, right? This is a separate entity. In fact, I can take this drop shadow and I can literally drag it around. Okay, drag the text around instead. Look, I want to drag the drop shadow, dude. <laughs> oh my god. 
Ah, lock that bad boy. Why can't I drag, drag the drop shadow? What the heck? See, this is what I'm talking about. This is GIMP for you. Like, seriously, this is so dumb. This became a layer. Why the heck am I not able to move this dang layer? I can move it up, put it on top of it. I just want to freaking drag it. Oh, my gosh. So, basically, because I made it the top layer, I was able to drag it. What the? Oh, okay. Whatever. So basically what it what it's doing those settings in the drop shadow options does is the 15 that was set is how blurry it's going to make a replica of this right that's why this kind of looks blurry like that and then the 4 and the 4 was offset from the center so this probably like I have it right now probably would have been 0 and 0 so 4 and 4 was like bring it down just a little bit well 15 and 15 would have been something like this 30 right and as you move those numbers it just goes this way it's not a dynamic object it is literally a layer now that just represents the text so if I want to change it I have to go back up here and I have to go to filters and I have to go to drop shadow like this and do it again so if I want to offset 15 but I want the blur radius to be 30 it just made another layer so now I have two layers of drop shadows drop shadow one and drop shadow two see how it's blurrier that's because the blur radius is 15 and it also put it in a different spot it wasn't like direct under it like this it kind of dropped it off to the side so Am I beating up on it too hard? Probably. Um, you just have to get used to how that works. It's not how Photoshop works. Photoshop allows you to apply FX to an object and they just kind of float around with it. So with that started, let's hop over to, to Krita. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's kind of like Rita, I'd imagine, with a K. The K, I believe, stands for um, the KDE desktop um, environment. And I'm using GNOME, but it looks like it works just fine. I literally got the Krita straight from the Ubuntu store. I didn't do anything fancy. It was very easy to install. I just went to this store icon right here. I typed in Krita, hit the install button, bam, that's it. All right, so this is it. So this is literally what it looks like right out of the box. This is a pretty good looking window, I think. It looks like Photoshop right out of the gate. I didn't have to apply my own um, theme to it like I did with GIMP. This is it. You know, it just shows up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on File. We're going to go ahead and do New. I'm going to do the basically the same thing I just did in GIMP. We're going to do it with... Um, with Krita. So I don't want, I want a transparent background, right? But you can't really just say transparent background in this one that I'm aware of. You can just change the background color, but I can't pick like, where's the transparent color, right? doesn't really matter. So what you do is you just change the background of first layer and then you just hit create. So I've, this is basically the same size as um, the other image. This is 1280 by 720. That's what I was working with in GIMP. The zoom naturally looks like it's a little bit higher right like it zoomed a hundred percent here instead of and it looks like it fits right in that window actually left and right now there's a little bit of overlap anyhow so if I don't want the white background I can literally just go ahead and delete this layer that it made white right remove layer bam so now I'm I'm a hundred percent transparent right now there really isn't anything here I can delete this layer too maybe I can't that is the background layer okay so look how it changes the layer number Did you see that so if I right click and I say delete it'll be layer five all right so what I want to do though is we're going to go ahead and pull the text tool up which is way up here and you can't just click in the window so that's not an intuitive thing to me I'm like what why can't I where's my text like seriously you actually have to like select something which is kind of dumb because no matter what size I make this box like let's go like this I guess it can't be that small oh, oh look at that it does matter so it can't be this small because that doesn't mean anything can't, it has to be within a certain size, and then it just drops down this huge thing of text, right? I, I don't know the answer to that one. That's just something you have to get used to. So let's pick Bungie as our font. Let's go ahead and go with a big one. And let's say hello. Wait. Hello. There we go. So I just literally put my uh, text in there. I'm going to hit save, and there we go. I've got this big font now. Close, please. And I just want to basically drag this bad boy to the center. I think he might be a little on the large size, right? So how would you edit the text? I can click on the text thing. I can click on this box. I can right click. Doesn't really work, right? I mean, this is kind of not intuitive at this point. It literally just lost intuitiveness. So I can edit text, create new text with, but that's not what I'm looking to do, right? I don't want these new texts. These objects are they're get, it's going to be frustrating. I just I basically just want the hello text. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer, which it's still back there. 
So what is this text back here then? It only works with a vector layer. Okay, well this is a vector layer. So that must have been on the exact same layer. All right, so we can go ahead and just modify this text somehow. This is really crazy. Not intuitive, guys. Here I'm trying to sell your Creed a product. How the heck do you just modify text? Like, what the heck is that? Right click is my brush options. Did you notice? I literally just want to select this text object and edit it. That's all I'm looking to do. So this is a select shapes SVG tool, text tool. You can't double, ah, so you put it in the select mode and then you double click it enough. Like, double click doesn't work. See, that's a double click. This is me abusing it. That's a quad click before it comes up. What the? One, two, three, four. Ha! All right, so I don't know, dude. Whatever. So you can edit this text, right? What we wanted to do was a little on the big size. Let's go ahead and save that text. Close this window. I'm going to go ahead and drag this guy into the center. Okay. Got my text, right? So basically the same thing we just did over in uh, GIMP. But what I want to do, though, is apply effects to this. I just want to add some cool um, um, drop shadow, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to Layer. And I'm going to go to Layer Style. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to Drop Shadow. And I'm going to check this box right next to it. And I can change the distance. And you just notice it's also live. It will actually draw me a preview as I do this. So if I say spread, it should gap it out a little bit. If I say distance, it's like going to create this illusion of how far away from the object behind it, which is the same as that on GIMP it was 4 and 4, like where that where that blur goes. And then size is probably the radius, yep. So the size is how blurry that is, right? But the point of that wasn't like, can we compare the drop shadow options? They're probably pretty simil similar. I, I don't know if it had all of this kind of stuff where you can set like, <coughs> excuse me, you can set opacity so the drop shadow is not as sharp. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on this. That is a layer option right here, and you can see it on FX. It literally will follow this object. So if I drag this object, the drop shadow will stay. If I resize this, rotate it, that drop shadow gets recalculated every time and put back in. Now, I will say that it is a little bit on the slow side. That, that's kind of odd that it's taking that long to render a two-dimensional object, but whatever. So that's pretty rad. And if you want to re-edit that, you just right-click on it and you say uh, layer style, and then you're right back in here. So another thing I like to do, though, is I, I like stroke, right? I want to add not black because, well, actually, it would be black because I want my text actually to be, um, I want my text to be yellow like in the other example. So I'm going to quad click this bad boy. <laughs> and I want to change the color. So where do you think that would be? Settings? Interesting. So they don't have a color. There it is. Duh. Okay, so I'm going to pick yellow now. There we go. Man, that looks good. See how fat, how good that is? That's That's excellent. And I can rotate this around, basically making any way I want. And the shadow and the stroke follows it. Doesn't look like the shadow re-rendered, though. That's interesting to see, huh? Let me grab this bad boy again. Is there a shadow under there? I guess there kind of is a shadow, but maybe maybe what's going on is the shadow is the stroke is too big and the shadow's getting drowned out by it. So you can see down here it's doing an updating again. That's, that's uh, kind of slow there. So this is an i7 CPU. It's got 16 gigs of RAM. Um, it's a mobile video card of some type. It's not like a GTX 1060 or anything fast. It's an older laptop. It's a workstation graphics card. All right, so let's go ahead and check out my drop shadow because it's still there, I thought, but it's not like I can see it. So actually, it's the stroke I don't like. Let's go ahead and take this stroke down to like 6. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on that. And there, my drop shadow is still there. So anyhow, that's pretty rad, right? I mean, this is a, this is a decent product. I, I, wasn't, I didn't want to go through like every option in Krita. I just kind of wanted to show that this is an excellent alternative to Photoshop on Windows to uh, using, you know, if you're used to using Photoshop on Windows to using a Photoshop-like tool in Linux. And uh, Krita is probably the tool you're going to want to play around with uh, more so than GIMP. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, do whatever you want. See you around.